morning. Welcome on this gorgeous summer morning as we come together in worship and in community. It is so good to be here. It's good for us to be on this, on this, in this community and on this land. And even though we are in the city, we're in a beautiful city that reminds us everywhere that we're in, we're in God's creation. We're in Earth community. We've got the river right here. We've got grass and trees all around us. And hopefully we can use those visual nature reminders as a reminder that we not only stand in Ottawa, we not only stand on the banks of the Rideau River, but we stand on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin peoples. And my prayer is that we allow that to, that, that knowledge to go from our heart, head into our heart, into our spirit, so that it informs how we live our lives, how we live out our history. And now I invite kids to come up and light candles. I wonder who's going to come up. You're doing rainbow today, and you're doing people. All right, go. And Greg, do you remember what this candle's called? I say it every Sunday. Go ahead and light your candle. Do you remember what this, the light of this candle symbolizes, Greg? <laughs> Who do we follow? God. Who? Who specifically? Jesus, right? And we've been taught that the love and the light of Jesus Christ is within us and around us. But sometimes people need visual symbols to help us with that. And so this candle we call the Christ candle. And you see how it's inside a circle of people because we're in a community. And we get to know Christ and we worship Christ in community. And this community is? Riverside. Riverside United Church. Yeah. And Ella, do you remember, what is another word for the rainbow? What do we call the rainbow flag sometimes? Or the rainbow towel we have at home. What do we call it sometimes? Do we call it the pride towel? Yeah, the pride flag. And that's because in this community, we are quite intentional about welcoming and being a community that takes pride in all of the expressions of all the ways that God makes God's people, including our gender, the way we understand ourselves, and who we love. And so that we also have a fancy outlet called affirming. And that's what that kind of stands for. There. And I'll see if you remember next time, okay? Thank you very much. But you know, if you say something negative, you pick it right up and you remember it forever. <laughs> All right. Please join your hearts with mine and, and uh, share the invitation into worship. We have awoken to a new day surrounded by God's beauty and abundance. We come to worship God. We start a new week with endless, unfolding possibilities. We embrace these possibilities, knowing that God embraces us. With the Holy Spirit among us, we open ourselves to God's call on our lives and hearts. Let us worship God. And let us sing now our opening hymn, This is the Day, Voices United 412.
pray. God of all beginnings, we come today with praise on our lips and in our hearts. We stand in awe of all you have created, the vast expanse of a starry night and the tiny beauty of a raindrop together reflect your glory. You have blessed creation with life and meaning. Your love makes a beginning in us too, O God. In each new life born into the world, in each new friendship formed, in each kindling attraction, in each kind word and act for neighbor or stranger, we praise you, O God, for your love moving in the world around us, lived out in Jesus, and by the Spirit at work in us. All praise and glory belong to you, Source, Savior, and Spirit of love, one God, now and always. Amen. And let us pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, I invite the kids to come up and the kids in heart. Hi, guys. Do you know what this is? What is it, Gray? You forget. This is what I was looking for in the garage for Emma's house. So this is, who knows what this is? Do you remember? You can see? It's a chalk plumb line. Plumb line. Now there's a little piece missing, I will admit. This is the one from our house, where we would, we would hold the chalk. Okay? Do you know what a plumb line does? It sees if the wall is even. It sees if the wall is flat. Is flat. Now do you know that because you heard me talking about it? <laughs> so what you do, now I have never used one, so I might get it wrong. How would you actually use it? But yes. It goes up, and with the chalk one, this would come out, and it would have it would, the string would be coated in chalk, and it would be used either when you're working on a piece of wood to see if you've got the line straight, but to see especially if the wall is straight. And it would go down, and it would go down, and you would you'd have it held tight and ping it, and it would be chalk. And if the chalk doesn't go all the way down, you know the wall's not straight. Now there's other plumb lines too. It could be Google plumb line. You get the pictures of the beautiful ones that look like a bob, like that. They're usually brass and they come down to the point. And plumb lines have actually been used for a super long time. Back even in the days of the Bible. And the reason I'm talking to you about a plumb line is because in the Old Testament, in the reading from the Hebrew Bible that we're, your grown-ups are going to hear today, God takes a plumb line and uses it to see if his people Israel are straight and true. Now, before I get to that, do you know why a wall has to be straight? Ella. To build. What happens if you build and the wall's a little bit crooked? It looks bad, absolutely. And it's sort of one of those things where you build on a mistake and then by the time you're done, like you're just like, it looks like a house with three little pigs, okay? Or if you're building a bookcase and it's just like, okay? But even more important, what are those walls doing? Sorry? Supporting. They're supporting the roof. They're supporting, the, say, the second floor. And so, load-bearing walls are perfectly straight and they can take lots of pounds of pressure. But if they're crooked a little bit, what happens? It collapses. Yeah. And you really don't want your house to collapse. Right? So you gotta make sure those walls are straight. Well, insurance helps pay for the mistake. <laughs> so in the Bible story, God uses a plumb line 
more like the image would be the one that you guys are going to see in the, in the PowerPoint, but it's more the, the one where you hold it down straight rather than with the chalk. But God uses that to measure whether Israel is straight and true. How do you measure people? Well, this is used like a poetic, yes, Ellen? Um, you can get a really long rope and measure. You need a really long rope to measure. But it's, a, it's, a, it's like in poetry, right? It's being used as an image to, to make us think about something. So God wants us all to grow as Christians to be straight and true, right? To be, to be going forward in the way God asks us to be, right? So God wants us to be full of love and forgiveness and generosity and compassion, love our neighbors, right? Love our siblings. And when we do that, we are strong and straight and we can take lots of pressure from the world and we can take, you know, the troubles that come our way and the storms that come. Pay attention. But if we if we veer off from the way God wants us to be and we end up a little bit crooked, and all that pressure comes down, the storms of life, the stresses of life, when we're not being forgiving, when we're not being very loving, when we're maybe we're being greedy, or we're really full of a lot of fear and anxiety and worry, we're gonna fall, we're gonna collapse. And so God uses that plumb line to see whether God needs to help us to get back to being straight and true and correct. Does that make sense, that image? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, whatever. <laughs> you get that? So, what happens if you're feeling like you're not always so strong and able to hold up? What do you do? You? What do you do? Do you pray? You pray to God? You know, you know, well, no, no, we're going to ask God to help fix us. Fix that wall. You pray to God. You ask God to forgive you if you've done wrong. You ask God to open your heart. You ask God to fill you with love. And then you go out there and you practice all that. And that makes you strong, like a wall holding up lots of floors above it. Okay? Does that sound good? So we can pray now. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. For Jesus, who helps us to be strong and true. Amen. Thank you, my children. All right. Now we're going to sing. Now we're going to sing. And you guys hopefully will sing too. And then you'll walk with Kat for children's church. Children's worship. So my husband had done children's worship the last few weeks when Kat was away, and uh, and he did a more of a traditional lesson, the story and some crafts and whatnot. Um, but as we know, Kat likes to play with things outside, and so this morning I said Kat's going to be back, and Ella said, "Oh, good, she does fun things like explosions." <laughs> so that's your kerosene, Kat. All right, let us sing. Uh, o for World Voices United six nine seven.
rights of party. Please pray with me. God of loving kindness, Jesus called us to love you above all else, and our neighbor as ourselves. Yet we often fail to act in loving ways. We are distracted by our own needs, forgetful of the needs of others. We let differences divide us and excuse ourselves from reaching out. Forgive us, O oh God. Create in us new hearts so we can live and love faithfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, God's generous love reaches out to embrace us. In Christ, we are forgiven and set free to begin again. Let us give thanks for God's mercy and be at peace with God, with ourselves, and each other. Amen. Our song this morning is Psalm 82. God stands in the council of heaven, in the midst of the gods gives judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and favor the cause of the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Save them from the hands of the wicked. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Amos, chapter 7. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. And from the New Testament, Luke chapter 10. 
Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denali, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. May the spirit of life move through the speaking and hearing of our sacred story. Difficult, troublesome. 
that we find judgmental, hard to accept. We tend to dismiss passages like these as part of the law and judgment Old Testament, and we like to focus on the images of God as kind and loving, especially toward Israel. Many of us also grew up in a church that misinterpreted and abused the notions of God's judgment at our expense. So it can be difficult then to wonder about the good news that is to be found in this difficult reading. The judgment that God offers here and elsewhere throughout the Bible isn't actually a bad thing. The judgment of God is a part of God's grace and mercy offered to us. We need God to check in on us and take our measure so that God can guide us when we are off the mark no longer straight and true in our relationship with God. The good news in this reading, then, if, is found along that plumb line that God draws, along the line that is used to measure whether the walls are straight and true, or whether they are not and are thus compromising the entire structure of the building. A plumb line isn't meant to judge in the shame-based way we are used to. A plumb line isn't meant to castigate or to reject. It is simply a measuring tool to help guide the builder in creating a strong structure. It is a tool that allows us to check and correct our work to celebrate what is plumb and to fix or rebuild that which needs straightening. God created a covenant relationship with Israel. God said, you will be my people, and I will be your God. And God set out what that covenant meant, how we were to uphold our end of the agreement, and how God would. The covenant relationship that God created with us is the plumb line for our lives. It is the line by which our lives are measured to see if they are straight and true, will hold up in the winds and storms in our lives. Here in this reading, we see that Israel has gotten way off track. Its lines are no longer plumb. In this time, King Jeroboam II has inherited the system established by Jeroboam I, the first. Jeroboam had instituted a state religion in which he ruled supreme. State power was absolute, and both priests and professional prophets were acting on behalf of the political leadership, saying what they wanted to hear, doing what they wanted them to do. This was a state that existed on the backs of the poor and denied the justice that God calls for in the covenant relationship. But this isn't new to us, is it? This isn't the first time that we have seen such a thing happen. We have seen church and state collude time and time again. We have seen governments who make the poor suffer and violently stifle dissent. We have seen the covenant relationship with God broken by the very people who claim that covenant relationship for themselves. The walls are crooked. The load-bearing walls are about to collapse on the very people they are supposed to shelter and protect. Dietrich Bonhoeffer decried the silence of the church in the face of increasing Nazi evils during World War II. Oscar Romero, Archbishop in El Salvador in the 1970s, spoke out against the military government there he was assassinated while presiding over Mass in March 1980. And here in Canada, we have seen the devastating consequences of the church colluding with the government in building residential schools across this country. Today, we are discovering the graves of many thousands of Indigenous children who died, unnamed and unaccounted for at those schools. God brought down the plumb line in Nazi Germany and the walls were not straight. God brought down the plumb line in El Salvador and the walls were not straight. God brought down the plumb line in Canada and my God, the walls were and still are not straight. God brought down the plumb line in 
discovered that our covenant relationship with God was broken. In these places and elsewhere in the world, our covenant relationship with God has been broken so far from straight and true that the only thing to do is begin again to build again. Through the humble prophecy of Amos, God lets Israel know that they are so far off course that what they have created must be destroyed. What they have created must be torn down and built up again. What they have created is so far from the vision of that God has for God's people that they must get back down to the foundation and build again. The same was true in Germany, in El Salvador, and the same is true here in Canada. Far from being something to fear, God's judgment is not meant to solely destroy. Yes, it has been misinterpreted and abused by the church and in our world. But God's judgment, God's use of a plumb line to see how we are doing is meant to guide us and lead us back when we need it. It is there to help us correct and course correct. Theologian and Methodist Bishop Will Willimon says, A biblical judge is someone who not only makes judgments about the rectitude of behavior, but also actively seeks to work justice to set things right. God's grace and mercy, God's love and forgiveness, God's compassion and constant presence, these are the qualities that God offers us to us to help us build walls that are straight and true. That are plumb. These are part of the covenant that God has made with us, the plumb line that God has made. When we see, whether in our personal lives or in society, as courageously witnessed to by Bonhoeffer, Romero, indigenous peoples throughout Canada, so many others around the world, that the walls are crooked, then we must build again. We must return to our covenant relationship and begin again. We have been shown how to do that. The prophets show us how to do that. Jesus shows us how to do that. We have one example today in today's parable of the Good Samaritan. There are so many others in the Gospels. Willimon points out that the same God who comes to us as the shepherd seeking the one lost sheep among the 100, and as the woman searching for the lost coin, two parables in Jesus' Gospels, also comes to us this time as a loving judge to set things right between us and God. Sometimes we are the ones that God is sending out. God has set the plumb line and found what is off, what is not plumb. And so God sends out common people. Amos was a farmer. He was neither a professional prophet nor from a family of prophets. God sets out common, sends out common people, ministers and lay people, those without status, wealth, or control, to speak truth to power, to speak up and out like Amos did, like Bonhoeffer and Romero did like those regular people who have and are continuing to do so now. We are all called, no matter the cost to us, to draw a plumb line in the world and see what is no longer straight or true and call for course correction. We are all called, no matter the risk, to draw a plumb line against injustice, against abuse of power, against the ways in which institutions of all kinds work against justice, against the needs of the poor and marginalized. God draws down a plumb line in our lives and gives us a plumb line to do the same as part of our covenant relationship and to help restore the covenant relationship among God's people. The good news is that God regularly takes a plumb line to our lives and seeks to see if how we are living is straight and true. If not, God calls to us seeking course correction. And the good news is that God invites us to do the same in the world, to 
to be part of God's work in bringing justice, restoring right relationship, bringing about healing and wholeness. Bonhoeffer left an indelible mark on the church, enduring teachings about discipleship and the role of the church. Romero, who has since become canonized in the Roman Catholic Church, has become a martyr for justice and liberation theology in Central America and elsewhere. And here in Canada, the voices speaking out for the children lost and harmed in residential schools are being heard more and more. The work continues. The plumb line continues to be drawn. The walls continue to be measured. And may we join in May we continue in that work. May we draw down the plumb line. May we work to ensure our own walls are straight and true in our relationships with God. And may we work to build the structures for peace, justice, and reconciliation in the world today. When the walls are straight and true, much weight can be taken. And no storm can make it collapse, can destroy it. Maybe so, thanks be to God. Let us sing now. God of grace and God of glory. Voices United 686. Please note that we will be using the tune, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, which requires that you repeat the last phrase in each stanza.
bring it forward for the building of community, the building of God's kingdom. So let us pray over the gifts. God, we bring our gifts to you. We present the work of our hands and our desire to serve. Let our sharing of our gifts be part of the vision of how your world should be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we move now into our times of prayers of the people. Are there any joys or concerns you'd like to lift up this morning? Yes, I'm fine. Bring your mask down, right? Bring your mask down so we can hear you. I have a joy in having my three daughters here from all parts of the world. <laughs> Love you. Ages, and it reminds me that this is where 
I ever saw it first, and it's for grocery gift cards. So cards are available for Farm Boy, Coast Depot, Metro, President's Choice, Shoppers Drug Mart, and payment for those cards is also now available through e-transfer to the um, RUC Grocery at gmail.com. And there's a note here trying to encourage you to buy them. It says you can keep on giving the multinational stores 100% of your money, or you can divert 5% of those funds to the church by buying these prepaid grocery cards. They buy them, at, the church buys them at bulk, at, uh, in bulk at a discount, and so then um, it's an easy way to contribute. Richard was letting me know this morning, and I hope Richard, I get the details right, that the construction on the front of our chancel is just waiting for parts for the handrails. Uh, and then, um, as we know, the audio system is in, the video system is just waiting for some final parts, and then we'll be able to do some testing and see how that's working. And then in late July and early August, he says, quote unquote, there will be a wall cleaning and painting extravaganza. <laughs> so many hands make light work, and, and uh, so hopefully, lots of folks who can help with that. Are there any other announcements? Okay, good. All right. Let us close with an oldie but a goodie. Amazing Grace, Voices United 266. Love 